Hello science people, today I want to talk about blood types. All right, so I want to start by saying there are lots of different blood types, way more than you've probably heard about. But for this video, I'm just going to stick to the common blood types type A, B, AB, and O. So just those four blood types. And then I'll talk a little bit about what it means to be positive or negative. Okay, so let's jump into a little bit of biology recap. On your cells, you have what's called a recognition protein. A recognition protein is a name tag for your cells. Some cells have them, some cells don't. Blood types are a recognition protein. It's a name tag that says, hello, my name is. And so if you have type A blood, that means that your blood cells have a recognition protein that says, hello, I'm A. If you have B, then you have B recognition proteins around your blood. If you have AB, that means you make both. You have the recognition protein A and you have the recognition protein B. There's no such thing as an AB recognition protein. It's separate, A and B. You make both of those around your blood cells. Now, O is a little bit different. Type O means that you don't have a name tag. You don't have a recognition protein. And so saying O is kind of strange. Maybe we should call it type zero blood, uh, but that would be kind of strange to say I have zero blood. So I guess we'll stick to O. Okay, so again, type A, you have a recognition proteins, type B, you have type B recognition proteins, AB, you make both A and B recognition proteins, and O means you have no name tag. So you make no recognition proteins, you have a blank blood cell. So in order to understand how blood types work, how you inherit these, we gotta talk a little bit about genetics. If you're not sure how dominant recessive genetics works, check out my video on dominant recessive genetics. If you're not sure about codominance, check out my video on codominance. But let's get back to blood type. So you are a diploid organism, which means that you have two of every chromosome. You have two of every chromosome because you had a mom and you had a dad. So all of us had a mom and a dad and we got their genetics. So you have two of every chromosome. So that means that your dad gave you one gene for blood and your mom gave you one gene for blood. And so you inherited one gene each from your parents. And so let's say that you had a dad that had type A blood and you had a mom that had type B blood. That means that your dad gave you type A blood and your mom gave you type B blood. Those come together and that is type AB blood. So hold on a second. We need to point out that blood type is a codominant genetics. Codominant means that you they both show up. Now, there are dominant and recessive genetics, and then there's incomplete dominant genetics. In incomplete dominant genetics, when you get two genes, they blend together. For example, human skin color is an incomplete dominant genetics which means that if you have a dark skinned person and a light skinned person, their genetics will blend and then you can make a medium skin toned person. So that is called incomplete genetics or incomplete dominant genetics. Dominant recessive genetics is when you have a dominant trait and you have a recessive trait. And if you have two of the dominant traits, you get the dominant trait. If you have a dominant and a recessive trait, the dominant one is going to show up. If you have two recessives, then the recessive one will show up. And so dominant recessive. On humans, things like your earlobes, uh, right-handed or left-handed, eye color, those things are dominant and recessive genetics. So let's get back to our blood type. Type A and type B proteins, those are codominant. Codominant means you get both of them. One is not dominant and one is not recessive. They're not incomplete, they don't blend. What happens is you get both of them. So if you have an A and you have a B, you get AB. If you have an A and an A, you get A. If you have a B and a B, you get B. Okay, so now let's talk about O. O is recessive. And so A and B are codominant, but O is recessive. And so it works the same way dominant recessive genetics works. 
So if you have a type A and O blood type, so if you have A and O, the A is going to show up. Why? Well, because the gene for A says make A. The gene for O says make nothing. And so if your body is told make A and make nothing, the A is gonna be what you make. And so if you have type AA blood, you make A. If you have type AO, you make A. If you have type BB, you make B. If you have type BO, you make B. If you have type AB, you make A and B. And so the only way that you can be type O is if you have two O's. So you have to have O, O in order to have type O blood. And so again, you get two of these because you have two parents. You have a mom and a dad. All right, so we're gonna do a few Punnett squares in order to figure this out. If you're not sure how Punnett squares work, again, check out my dominant recessive genetics video where I also go over Punnett squares. Let's jump into it. So what does this look like on your blood? So there are four possible blood types, right? And so there is type A, there is type B, there is type AB, and there is type O. And so if you have type A, that means you're making type A recognition proteins all around your blood. If you have type B, then you're making B recognition proteins all around your blood. If you have AB, that means you're making A's and you are making B's all around your blood. If you are type O, then you make no recognition proteins. Okay, so let's do some Punnett squares. Okay, so let's say that you have a dad that has type AA blood, and you have a mom that has type B, B blood. And if we do a Punnett square for that, that means dad could possibly give you an A or an A. That means mom could possibly give you a B or a B. And if we bring this together, that means that 100% of their children, of these two parents, will have AB blood. Now, what if dad was AO? If dad was AO, then that would mean he could possibly give you an A or he could possibly give you an O. And so mom can give you a B or a B. And so they can make a kid that has AB blood they can make a kid that has BO blood, they can make another kid that has AB blood, and they can make a kid that has BO blood. And so there's a 50% chance that these two people will make a kid with AB blood, and there's a 50% chance that they will make a kid that has type B blood. And so if these two people have a kid that has type O blood, that means mom is not the real mom because in order to have type O blood, you have to get an O from both parents. Okay, so what if you have a dad that has type O blood? That means we know that they have two copies of O. And let's say that you have a mom that has type AO or A blood, but she has AO genotype. And so we bring these two together. What are the possible offspring that they can make? Well, dad can only give you an O mom can give you an A or an O, and so you'll have one child that is A, one child that is A, one child OO, one child OO. And so again, here you have a 50% chance of having a child with type A blood and a 50% chance of having a child with type O blood. So let's do one more Punnett square just for fun. Let's say that somebody that has type AO blood reproduces with somebody that has BO blood and let's see the possible children that they can have. And so if this person has A and O, and here's B and O, they could possibly have a child with AB, they could possibly have a child with type B, they could possibly have a child with type A, and they could possibly have a child with type O. And so if you have someone that has AO and BO come together, they together can make all four blood types. So that you can make a type AB, a type B, a type A, and a type O blood. Okay, so what about positive and negative? What does it mean to be A positive or B negative? Well, there's another recognition protein 
and we call it an RH factor. We call it RH because we first discovered it in rhesus monkeys, and then we found out humans also have it. So we'd already named it after the rhesus monkeys. And so you either have it or you don't. And so if you also have the RH factor, then that means you're positive. If you don't have the RH factor, then you're negative. And so if, for example, I am type A positive, which means the recognition proteins on my blood cells say type A and rhesus factor, so RH factor. So type A positive. You're making both of those recognition proteins. So let's take a minute to talk about blood transfusions. All right, so your body's job is to attack and destroy anything that is foreign, that does not belong there. It's a really good system. It helps protect us from things that can hurt us. So the same thing goes for blood. So I have type A positive blood. And so because I have A blood, my body recognizes that A recognition protein. And so if you give me A blood, my body goes, ah, it's blood, I'll use it. But if you give me type B blood, my body's never seen that recognition protein B. And so what happens is my body says, foreigner, I don't like this blood. I don't know what it is. It says its name is B. I don't recognize you. And you start attacking it. You destroy it. You kill it. So by getting blood that your body doesn't recognize, your body treats it as foreign and attacks it. So because I have type A blood, you have to give me type A blood. You can't give me type B blood. Now, if you are type O, that's the worst blood type to be for yourself. It is the best one for everybody else. Because type O has no recognition protein on it, everybody can take it. So all of us can take type O. So I'm type A, but if you give me O, it doesn't say anything, so I take it. So I will go ahead and use that. So if you have type A, you can take type O. If you have type B, you can take, take type O. If you have AB, you can take type O. If you have type O, because you have no recognition proteins, the only blood type you can take is type O. Because let's pretend I was type O. If you give me type A, my body doesn't recognize it and attacks it. If you give me type B, my body attacks it. You give me AB, my body attacks it. And so you only can receive type O if you are type O, but everyone else benefits from you and can take your blood. Now the opposite is true if you have type AB blood. Because you have type AB, your body recognizes A, your body recognizes B, and your body can take O because everyone can. So if you have AB, you can take A blood, you can take B blood, and you can take type O blood. So AB is the best one for you to be because you can take any blood given to you. But you can't really donate AB blood. Nobody wants it because the only people who can take AB blood are people with AB, and it doesn't really matter because AB people can take everyone's blood. So it's the worst one to donate, but it's the best one for you to be. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning about blood types. In my next video, I'm gonna show you how to test your own blood type at home. I'll see you guys next time.